Uh, my name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. So welcome to join the guest podcast funky the next time you hit the Subaris dance floor. So just uh, who am I? Uh, as I say, I'm um, I'm technical marketing major at Red Hat, uh, specialized in cloud native application development, and also try to give some more uh, actual practice for uh, many enterprise developers, but also IT operation team with Agile and DevOps. And also I am CMC ambassador and a DevOps Institute ambassador as well. So here's my old contact point. You got my Twitter and you got my YouTube channel and my gear repository. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any question around Quarkus and Red Hat technology, but also CNCF stuff. All right. So just think about it and uh, let's one step back why we needed to serverless and when the serverless came up. So it almost uh, five and six years ago, at the beginning time, we have only one serverless platform as say the SaaS service. Amazon. Everybody say that Lambda and everybody is still really love to using Lambda to address your serverless workload on top of that. After a few years, we have more serverless platform and offering such as Amazon, Google, and IBM, and even Kubernetes provides uh, serverless uh, capability on top of the K-native. And then what happened uh, at this moment, there are lots of serverless uh, platforms and uh, frameworks and tools and even security uh, ecosystem as well. Uh, as you can see here, this is came from the CNCF serverless landscape. There are a lot of tools, which means, oh, we can address and implement design our serverless application and architecture and the platform. Even you can have uh, managed the services or you can install and build up your own manageable platform for your serverless application. For example, KNAB services and KNAB serving. Uh, allows you make that happen. So what is the concern or challenge with this serverless landscape? It's a too many choices. For example, I am individual Java developer. Which platform, which framework I have to use uh, for designing new serverless application and develop reactive application on top of that? For the DevOps engineers, they need to make a decision on which platform is a manageable or hosted or the installable platform would be perfect for their next generation DevOps platform as well as uh, addressing traditional microservices but also serverless application. This all uh, new tools and framework is uh, too much choices for as part of the burden for DevOps engineer and architect individual developers. Here's a very interesting survey uh, new, new leak, uh, executed uh, last year. So uh, as you see, there are only 60% Java developer uh, really love to use the Amazon Lambda to uh, handle their workload, I mean, business application workload on top of that. More and more, the uh, front-end application developer or edge developer really love to use Node.js and Python. Why, why uh, they really love to use Node.js, Python rather than Java. Even though there are more than 10 million Java developers out there around the world to implement business application, also maintain business improvement or bug fix or security problem every single day. But still, uh, the language platform framework and the problem language is really mobile forward to Node.js, JavaScript based and Python rather than Java. Here is the reason why uh, the Java is not fitted in serverless architecture. The first of all, Java was unleashed uh, upon the world back in 1995, almost 26 years ago. At a time, Java was designed for high network throughput, which means uh, it caused high expense to maintain the high uh, throughput, such as the big memory and the long uh, startup time. And also, once you deploy your application in production environment, and that should be run 
a long process such as 24 7 without any download and then uh, shutting down so it operation team totally accepted their long learning process and uh, maybe 10 minutes start of time doesn't matter the start of time but should be a stable service age for a long time that was the design criteria uh, for developing Java application, but also Java definitely uh, fundamentally have dynamic behavior, which means once the developer build your Java application, they have a bytecode, which means that bytecode can be running on any application server over the internet technology. So you don't need to rely on specific application server, or specific virtual machine. This is that was a really great benefit and a feature uh, to run your Java application, implement web application around the world with the internet technology. But after uh, 10 years or 20 years later, we have uh, such a great technology and also that technology allows us to run a uh, new uh, application on time, such as immutable infrastructure, such as we call the Kubernetes and Red Hat approach this is one of the enterprise already uh, Kubernetes services. So in this immutable infrastructure, uh, you have to run one single microservice application, but you have to consider scalability, which means the same application, but scale out thousand pods on Kubernetes cluster. So we don't need to uh, dynamic behavior any longer. It's not a good benefit or even advantage in this immutable infrastructure at the moment. That's why we need something different. If you still need to Java technology to run and architect with a container slash Kubernetes technologies. So Quarkus was born and designed to uh, overcome this uh, potential challenge. So Quarkus is a 100% open source project and it allows the developer to implement cloud neighbor microservice as well as the design serverless application, which he enabled to run your serverless application with the event-driven architecture. And then you can communicate backend or distributing systems such as Kafka messages services. So with the Quarkus, uh, totally emphasize on optimizing the your Java technology and architecture. For example, uh, you can run your Java application on OpenJDK like a JVM, but also you can run without JVM, just so you could have executable file called uh, native executable binary. And you can see the life cycle uh, pretty uh, shorter, such as just you can deploy every maybe thousand time in a day or start of time from seconds to milliseconds. And how it works, because Quarkus gives some two options for developer from compile an application and then uh, create your bytecode. And then you have uh, two choices to make the runnable image. First of all, uh, based on Java, the Java file, something like that. And then you can have take the ahead of time comp compilation strategy which allows you have a native executable file, so you can just run that file just like a Go. And the more important thing is Quarkus ship to all uh, necessary tasks when you run time, such as the annotation scanning or price descriptor and the enable, disable some specific feature and configuration. This is always happening at runtime when you run Java application traditionally, but Quarkus moved that required request and task from runtime to build time. So this is a huge impact, uh, makes your Java application lighter, smaller, really fitting in the, your container plus Kubernetes technologies. So how do Quarkus support uh, the native comparison strategy? The native comparison came from uh, the GraalVM technology and the GraalVM invented by Oracle and then there were two versions, community edition, but also enterprise edition. And the Quarkus more uh, support uh, the Mandrel downstream project from GraalVM, 
uh, which is aligned to OpenJDK technology. And we also uh, keep maintaining the security problems such as CVE, and also we're gonna add more uh, enterprise capabilities such as debugging, uh, monitoring, et cetera. So this is the only way uh, Quarkus support the native cooperation based on Mandrel project. And how Quarkus address the function and serverless capability for your application. Here's a really uh, interesting, and uh, I really love this name. So Funky is one of the extension of Quarkus. The, the extension means it's one of the capability. Just imagine that if you have some experience to develop Maven project on Java application, you, you need to define multiple dependency on your project, uh, such as a JaxRS or a data transaction like a PostgreSQL or MongoDB. This is all capability on your Java application, which is specified and defined on your Palm XML as a dependency. So focus extension is the way uh, specify that dependency and capability. So one of the extension as uh, no, the name is a funky, allows the, you have a portable Java API to write your function and which you deploy multiple fast platform like a Google, Amazon, and Knative, and also the Microsoft, et cetera. And this is a cool snippet and just funk uh, annotation, make you your Java method as a function. I'm gonna show you a quick demo just a bit later. So also you can have uh, traditional request and response synchronized application function, but also you can handle uh, a synchronized reactive application. Just easy, but still using phone annotation, but you just define the return code from uh, just string type, but this is the uni or mutiny uh, reactive type. In a Quarkus framework or a wire, your application method as a reactive uh, capability. And also you can have the context uh, dependency injection like a Spring DI by default. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus framework uh, to have the CDI injection. And here is a, uh, what kind of a serverless platform or fast platform you can use and you can deploy with the exactly same Quarkus application as a function. So just so you can deploy function as a standalone or, or you can deploy Amazon Lambda or KNAB event or Azure function and your Google function, Google Cloud. This, uh, you don't need to figure out the syntax or API uh, to deploy the specific uh, cloud platform, which means you don't need to change any code, just so you need to figure it out and uh, put in the, your configuration on your application properly, uh, such as, for example, target platform is, uh, this is Amazon, this is Google, this is uh, uh, Microsoft, this is uh, KNAB, et cetera. And one thing, a uh, little bit drill down KNAB because everybody is doing Kubernetes and the Kubernetes provide the KNAB, uh, which uh, allows you manage, deploy, and implement uh, serverless application on top of the Kubernetes. So the, you just need to KNAB, uh, uh, manifesto using Quarkus because the Quarkus funky annotation uh, automatically generate your KNAB manifesto YAML file just like that. We just need to put in the one Quarkus.Kubernetes.Deployment dash target equal KNAB. This uh, app, just one single key value compilation, uh, make that happen just like the right side of your YAML snippet. And then with, with this all, Quarkus things, you just need to uh, write your code just like a function and the packaging uh, using Maven or Gradle and then deploy uh, like a Maven or Gradle command line. Just three step from application development to deploy your application to Kubernetes cluster for serverless application. So I'm gonna stop the talking and uh, just jump into demo how it works. So start my project mode. And then here's my local environment. So I'm gonna use the KNAB serving command line, AKA KN, and there are some add-on KN funk. Uh, it's a dev preview in OpenShift 4.6 cluster as a part of the OpenShift serverless operator and capability. 
So here's my sample uh, local directory. As you can see, I have some spew uh, experiment thing here. So first of all, I'm gonna need to create my function project. So KN func and create and the quarkers, the function name quarkers func. And then uh, I'm gonna to use the runtime environment in the quarkers. There we go. And then now we have a new Quarkus Funk project is automatically generated. And you go to Quarkus project, and then you can find that the Maven project automatically generated. And let's take a look at the Funk YAML file. As you can see, uh, the function name uh, Quarkus Funk and namespace, each, which is um, uh, referring to uh, your Kubernetes namespace or open the project name and runtime. Quarkus actually, this function. Uh, or else you have a multiple runtime like a Spring Boot and Quarkus, and Node JS, and Go. You know we don't have we don't uh, build this application at this moment yet, so that's why there's no image, uh, some value, and the trigger HTTP, and also build the image here. So, so next step, I'm gonna uh, deploy this application, but. But for that, we're gonna just use one uh, Java ID to take a look at the little bit detail of this application. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, uh, which make you comfortable to see it. And here's a phone AML file, and then go to source directory. In the palm XML, uh, there are Quarkus version, and then you can see here the funky KNAV event already uh, in, uh, pull down your application and go to our Java file. Here's a function, just like a cool snippet. Uh, we just needed to one func annotation here and then that the other method, just like a POJO. And then it's just input the JSON file message and then output the JSON file message. It's so simple. You could uh, get started to add more business of capability on this application, on this, this template, okay? And then go back to funk YAML and back to the terminal. And the next step, I'm gonna just uh, deploy this application and I'm gonna need to specify the, uh, the container registry once I build this application as a job file. And then I'm gonna do uh, upload and then push this application as a containerization and then we will uh, to the image uh, when we deploy this application to Kubernetes or OpenShift container prepper. For today, I'm gonna use OpenShift 4.6 cluster. And uh, my the registry and then the, the namespace, we're gonna use Quarkus uh, funk namespace and Barbara's here. So for the run it, here's my OpenShift cluster and then the Quarkus funk, there's no resource here. Uh, there's no uh, pod or anything because I didn't deploy anything at this moment. And back to here, I'm gonna run this application. The first step, I'm gonna build this application like uh, the Java, uh, the Maven packaging, uh, something like that. The basically we using build pack project to build this application and containerization and push it, pull, et cetera. So as you can see, when you go back to IID2, you can find that the namespace is automatically updated based on our uh, parameter in our command line. And the image uh, just updated that uh, because I put in the, this is as a parameter when I run the KM funk command line and the image digest will be updated soon. Yeah, just like here, because when you go back to terminal, it's already uh, the deep push it in, and we need to uh, KNAV serving become ready. And when you go to open the container platform, now you can see the your uh, server is already deployed. When you click on the below, you can find here, here is a JVM application, and then you just need a four, six second uh, to start up, almost four and a half a second to start up and go back to topology view. And then one thing, uh, <clears throat> Maybe interesting, we needed to add a label here, like an app, openshift.io, and one time equal Quarkus. Because we need to deploy one more time today. Now you can see Quarkus, and then uh, go back to here, 
And here is the REST endpoint, uh, your Quarkus application. And I just try to copy. And I try to uh, call, uh, invoke endpoint. Here, the message, like a JSON and like a Quarkus function. And call the end point here. Let's give it some moment. Yeah, so our application already terminating, which means the default configuration setting is the second, uh, which means if there's no demand or request to this application serverless function, this will be scaled down to zero by default, just like a serverless behavior, like an Amazon Lambda. And then once it already terminated and down to zero, and we will uh, invoke and trigger this serverless function using a call command, like a HTTP request, and this will be uh, go up automatically like a core star, one of the behavior of a serverless application. Okay, we just down and you know, back to the here and the, just trigger your application using HTTP protocol and back to the here, your application just start off. This is the uh, exact same behavior, your serverless application. And now we got the return is a code. It takes just two seconds make that happening. So let's try to one more, uh, another experimental thing. So go back to here and I try to uh, using native comparison. So just to make sure the different function name native and then image also native. And the builder, we just need to uh, here uh, native. So this uh, make your application native comparison. So go back to terminal window and then uh, phone command line and deploy once again. So uh, this will be uh, packaging your application user builder pack, but as you can see, we got to using the native and then uh, we're going to uh, package this application as a native executable file based on GraviM and it takes a little bit longer than our previous uh, deploy because uh, the neighbor comparison uh, compare your own necessary dependency and library, et cetera. Just like uh, you see uh, container image is immutable file, which contain all necessary uh, file to run that container. So it's a exact, the similar concept. So it takes a little bit longer. So in the meantime, Let's try to open new terminal and the, what kind of uh, capability the KN Funk provider. For example, KN Funk create, and I'm going to help command line. You can see here, you can uh, select the multiple runtime. For example, Go, Node.js, Quarkus, and the Spring Boot. Default is Node.js, and then you can also trigger uh, default HTTP, we just did it. And then you can also uh, set in the event. And then once you set in the event, the your template project will be generated the cloud event source code rather than HTTP uh, request re response uh, Java method. Okay, and then when you go to uh, here, and then let's try to switch another project here. So there are, uh, this is all about developer standpoint, but what about operation team? And they also care about serverless and function on, their, uh, on top of their own uh, platform. So here is the, another good way to open the full six cluster or later version, provide a hem chart. It's a, one of the popular uh, uh, tool to manage your software, a template or maintain like a day to operation. So when you go to ham chart and then uh, or a topology, you can actually uh, add the ham chart and there are Quarkus ham chart already there. It's a still uh, preview feature, but you can actually use that. So for 
DevOps engineer or operation team or SRE, they can actually install Hamchild for standards, st Quarkus at one time. They can also add some specific configuration. So just imagine, okay, I, I need to some a standard uh, application server like a JBoss EAP or uh, Apache web server. They need to define based on OpenShift template or Kubernetes so YAML file or operator or Ansible. Now they can do that same capability with Hamchar for Quarkus standard runtime. So just install Hamchar and then uh, install your Hamchar here. Okay, I'm gonna try to a uh, new one. Uh, and I install your ham chart and then it takes uh, a few seconds and then you can go to, uh, but you got a lot of image full back of a don't scary out about don't freak out. When you go to ham chart and then you can have a ham new and then go to regional, now you can find that you will deploy my real report image full error or image full back up because it's still build is uh, ongoing. So when you go to build and then use Quarkus build and go to build menu, you can find the logs file here. It takes a few minutes to uh, finish your build your application. In the meantime, as you see, uh, this ham chart clone the existing sample application and then build that application using Maven or uh, the Gradle and then packaging just like a S2I source to image process. Let's go back to our terminal window and uh, how the, oh, you are the neighbor comparator just did it. And then go back to open to the console. And then now we have a new uh, neighbor compilation. It's already terminating uh, during the dead time. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, just trigger one more time and copy here and then echo. So I'm gonna just delete it. Uh, the endpoint, new endpoint, and then just try to another message like a Quarkus native function. And then go back to console and then this your application automatically uh, scale up. And then just we got a, a native compilation return, but it takes a little bit faster. As you can see the startup time here, uh, just 32 milliseconds previously with the JVM, we just see a uh, 4.5 seconds. It's a almost 100 faster than any application. This is really building native compilation with your server less. And then go to here, your application almost uh, running up. So it takes a little bit uh, second, a little bit more time to finish that. So we got. I have another a few more slides to wrap up this today. So go back to here and then present mode. We have already running over time. Okay, so here's a more use case and a demo if you're really more interested in uh, Quarkus and the serverless or, or a cloud native application development. I pretty strong recommend you just subscribe to my YouTube channel, Binny uh, Daniel OTV. I put in the tons of the video demo and the technical tutorial, etc. For example, here is how to develop the serverless application based on Quarkus Funky and then that front end Quarkus application, communicate the back end, uh, display data grid on top of the infinite span. And you will find out how to auto scaling automatically and scale down to zero automatically based on your on demand network throughput. So the Quarkus, once again, uh, born for Kubernetes native application development, but more focused on container technology and the live coding for developer joy. And then you can handle uh, traditional microservice application development, but also reactive application. But it's still Java, which means you can easily integrate a lot of uh, open source project too, like a messaging or security or cloud, and also a lot of monitoring and observation tool. So here's a more uh, uh, help out your Kubernetes plus Quarkus journey, like IDC report in an interactive portal, like a try to Quarkus. And then you just need the web browser to go through the uh, tons of the scenario and the code.quarkus.io, the project generated uh, for today. So this is all I have. And I go to here. So now you can see uh, your uh, new Quarkus application here. And I go to hello, the endpoint. You got a new hello. and Another endpoint, reading in my name, Daniel, 
and then you can find here so you are the access endpoint with the uh, ham chart okay so i'm gonna i think it's done i'm gonna stop sharing any question around there no question means uh good sign so one thing, if you have uh, a question around the quark assets, just feel free to reach out to me by Twitter or YouTube, or I'm going to do uh, keep staying the uh, conference today. So you can uh, just uh, chat with me or the Discord or the, your chat room directly. I'm more than happy to address your question. Thanks for attending. Have a good rest of the day. Daniel, we have uh, one question here. OK. Oh. Uh, what is the software you are working with? Where is the question? Where can I find it? On the Q A Q and A tab. Q and A okay. tab. I don't see actually any question in Q and A tab. Yeah. Can you repeat the question once again? Certainly. What is the software you're working with? Software. Yes. Uh, yeah, so mainly I, I am the technical marketing major at Red Hat Runtime's team. So. Uh, I've been working with the Spring Boot and Quarkus and Node.js, uh, Vertex, all cloud native runtime, but also uh, data grid, uh, like a single sign on, all the runtime related product and software, and also Kubernetes thing as well. Okay. Uh, I have one question. So um, we'll remind everybody they can post the Q and questions in the Q and A tab. Uh, we still have Daniel here. And after the session, uh, Daniel, will, will you be available on Discord? For follow-on questions? Sure. Yeah, okay. sure. I will be there all the time. So just ping me or direct me. I will keep watching the session. Is this session the what is the session number uh, in the Discord? We're we're session room one. Okay, we'll be there. Yeah. So if you can monitor that, that would be fabulous. So yep. you had a, a slide that was that was very interesting where you talked about K native under Amazon, GCP, and Azure. So yep. Uh, so you, what your point really is that you can code once and then run in any of those three cloud providers as well as on-prem. Are there any changes you need to make to your code to run in those different environments? No, actually don't need. And then you just needed to add the target environment, your application properly file rather than Java code. So when you go to my YouTube channel, I actually posted all uh, the video demos, how to deploy same application to Amazon Lambda or Microsoft Azure or Knave, just like I uh, saw you today. So you can uh, figure out what difference thing between the multiple SaaS platform to deploy serverless function without any code change. And I'm going to put in the, this slide deck in the Discord as well. Excellent, excellent. And where do you, if I can ask you to uh, kind of foretell the future, where do you see serverless going? in the future yeah that is a really good question so actually i had a conversation earlier this week with a forester analyst around the serverless uh, strategy or vision and the interesting is the serverless is still early stage i mean in major technology because people saying serverless is uh, really fitting the just web application but it turns out more and more enterprise companies try to adapt the serverless technology with the multiple business domain, I mean, traditional business domain. So in the end, you can uh, evolve existing all business application with the serverless plus event driven architecture. But it takes a little bit of time to make that happen, like a, a cold start, a warm start, and uh, what is stress put, or what is your uh, container. What? So just imagine containers still a little bit uh, experimental thing for serverless technology because Amazon Lambda doesn't use a container technology. Just so you can unload your application itself and then running on top of it, just a virtual machine. So so there are uh, still uh, experimental thing with the serverless with the real application on enterprise production, but more and more enterprise are really uh, interesting adopting that thing. And in terms of manageability, how do, you know, if you decompose an application into thousands of serverless endpoints, yep. you know, how are companies managing, uh, you know, this, the application that way? Or is, or is that a benefit where you can change one thing and, and have little to no effect on the other applications? Yeah, this is another good question. So basically all serverless based on uh, 
the HTTP protocol and also the cloud event. So there are serverless workflow project to manage your uh, multiple thousand serverless as uh, one workflow, uh, multiple workflow for your uh, business uh, application behavior, but also you can have the API platform to manage or uh, handle your uh, request uh, from end user to your serverless application. Excellent stuff. I may have lost my video here. Oh, um, yeah, no worry. I can yeah. see your nice, handsome, handsome picture. Oh, you're, 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 shot. you're, 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 too, you're too kind, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, thanks, um, man. So if, if there's no other questions, I would invite everyone to uh, join Daniel on Discord. And thank you very much for, for an, aw an awesome talk. Uh, next yep. up, we will have Service Mesh, Serverless, and Adventure in Architecture with Langdon White. And that will start at uh, 3.30 Central European time. So again, Daniel, thank you very much on behalf of Atapio and myself. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ari, and thanks for attending everybody and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.